war. Intercept idiocy. In the immediate wake of the crash, Ukraine's intelligence agency, the SBU, released reported communications, communications intercepts between Russian separatists fighting in, the east, in, in eastern Ukraine that implicated the separatists in shooting down the Malaysian airliner. Note the conversation between Cossack leader Nikolai Kazitsin and a militant at the 150 mark in the YouTube video that we're going to show here. Это оказался пассажирский. Упал в районе Грабова. Там море трупов, женщины, дети. Сейчас казаки там смотрят это все дело. По телевизору передают вроде бы как этот. Ан-26 украинский. Ну, транспортник. Но, говорят, написано на нем малазийские авиалинии. И что он делал на территории Украины? Ну, значит, завозили шпионов. Не так точно. Так. Сейчас война идет, блядь. Понял. Here's what's interesting about this conversation, where Kazitsyn suggests the Malaysian passenger flight must have been bringing spies. In early June, Kazitsyn had another conversation intercepted by the SBU that implicated him in terrorism inside Ukraine. This intercept is highlighted in an online Ukraine investigation posted on a website dubbed Russian Cossacks are responsible for terror in Ukraine, intercepted conversation. If Cossack Kazitsyn had a conversation intercepted in early June implicating him in Ukraine terrorism, why would he be so foolish as to, as to engage in another communication after the downing of M flight MH17 that would implicate him in an incident for which he could be held accountable by the international community? It strikes me that there are two possibilities here. One is that Kazitsyn used the same means of communication he had used in June knowing that the SBU would likely intercept his conversation. The second possibility is that these revealing intercepts were created by the SBU in concert with Russian intelligence to help forge a historical narrative for the world to believe. While the latter may seem hard to believe, one should bear in mind that less than a year ago, the SBU was tightly controlled by Moscow under the Russian-serving Yan Yanukovych administration in Kiev. What's more, the SBU was clandestinely instrumental in the seeming revolution by pro-Western forces that most likely was not what it appeared to be. That's something I highlighted earlier this year on my blog. You have to check that for more information. Is anyone really so foolish as to believe the SBU suddenly switched to working for a Western-oriented Ukraine government at the flip of a political switch? Did the Russian KGB changing its name to the FSB really mean a difference? If you have trouble believing that Ukraine authorities may have had a hand in concocting a historical narrative written ahead of time by the Kremlin, then I suggest you consider another mysterious part of this historical tale.